Hello, my people, and welcome back to the Spotlight Reviewing Station here on Facebook rather than YouTube. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Studio Series Constructicon Long Haul, which is a Voyager Transformer action figure that came out a couple of months back. He's been sitting here in my room awaiting this opportunity at the Spotlight. Now that time has come, and I am aware I have yet to review any of the other Constructicons out of the Studio Series line. But fear not, I will in their own time. So let's put the figure aside for a moment. So we'll take a look at the packaging as we take of every single video review up close in your face. And as you can see, here's the front of the packaging with the characters. Very nice CGI render here. Very lovely. Looks like he's ready to grab maybe Sam or something. I, I don't know. They were all in search of... Um, what was it called? The Matrix of Leadership, even though it didn't look like the Matrix of Leadership. Right, anyway, Studio Series, Constructicon Long Haul, Hasbro's logo, HSA and Plus, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, there's the Transformers logo going up to the Misaligned Generations logo in the top right corner. On the other side, opposite to it, is Takar Tomy. On this side of the packaging, we've got the open window container here, which shows off Devastator's face, which is very hard to see here, but if that's not good enough, you can actually see the real face of Devastator from the film right here. Looks like he's breathing some kind of poisonous gas or something, doesn't it? Anyway, down below all that, we have the Authentic Transformer stamp, which to remind you, if it doesn't say Authentic, it's a knockoff. On this side of the packaging, we have an up-close shot of that CGI form of Long Haul's face. So menacing, so cool. One of the coolest looking head sculpts to come out of the design of the Constructicons from the Michael Bay film. Very nice. Studio Series number 42 onto the back of the packaging. And this is gonna be hard to see because there's a glare, but I'm gonna try my best. You can see we got his alternate form being a very big dump truck. And here's a look at his robot mode, which takes 21 steps of transformation back and forth. Right there, we've got the other figure available out of the Voyager line from this wave, which happens to be KSI Boss. A straight-up repaint, maybe a little bit of a retool of Nitro Zeus. Maybe. I don't have him, so I don't know for sure. Here's a good look at the backdrop that's included here. We'll take more details on that at the end of the video. Here's a sad on your face in case you wanted to see that. And down below here, we've got the barcode in case you're on the hunt for this figure. Go ahead and take a look so, at that. anyway, we're not going to look at the instructions. I've pretty much been through all this. Um, he is a triple changer, as he is a dump truck that transforms into a robot and also transforms into one of the limbs for Combiner Devastator, which, unfortunately, at the time of this recording, we still don't have all eight Constructicons. So I will not be showing off that mode. I'm saving it for the Devastator review, which I think the figure deserves in its own proper format. Anyway... Let's go ahead and take a look now at the dump truck. It's very nice. These things are big in real life. I have actually seen these in person. They are gigantic. This thing is a beast in itself. It's huge, it's bulky, it's very square. Yes, he does have a little bit of some robot kibble here. As you can see, the obvious forearms of long haul. But I understand what they were going for here. And from an actual side profile, you can't see it anyway, even from the front. Uh, a little bit in the back here, just a little bit, but it's not that obvious unless you really take a look from an air view. Anyway, down below at the bottom here, we got some nice panel work. You can see we got some grates here or something like that. Maybe some railing. Uh, it's done in gunmetal gray. Some more gunmetal gray here for this detail. We've got the, um, the hydraulics or the hinges to, you know, raising the dump truck. Uh, back portion here the bucket and having like maybe whatever it's carrying slide out which is pretty nice detail which i'm glad they actually painted in some nice silver here's a look at the front you can see we got a very nice gunmetal gray paintwork here no sloppiness to the grates some nice sculpting of the lighters going up to where you can see the steps leading to the door to the driver's side of this monster very nice. Some silver for the headlights. Uh, as you can see, the wheels on the left side roll pretty good. No problem. Even this wheel right here rolls okay. This one, on the other hand, doesn't really roll at all, making it very difficult to showcase him rolling. Only because it doesn't seem to get much clearance up here. It actually is touching 
the side where it actually clips in and it's a very flush connection that just won't allow this to roll as good as this one here it's just my figure don't be afraid of this this is not going to be a continuous problem your results are going to be different believe me still nice to see that they actually put some attention to detail here on the hubcaps and actually painted so before them. we go into transformation into robot mode let's take a good look at some of the other figures that have yet to be reviewed on this channel but i will show them off in their own time and here we have scrap metal rampage and hightower these two being deluxes, these two being voyagers. There's a couple of leaders that's coming out of the eight Constructicons. So yeah, there's gonna be a mix of a lot of things here, which means Devastator is gonna be one gigantic now on the transformation of long haul from his dump truck mode to his robot mode this is one of the most simplistic transformer figures to come out of the studio series in my opinion the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to untab the front section here as you can see we got a little bit of a line indicating that this is a separate piece from these pieces here which happen to be the feet for long haul what you need to do is find that sweet spot and try to pry this open. You don't want to put too much pressure on these pieces here because they might stress over time, maybe even snap. So let's give it a whirl. Be very careful about this because this hinge here could have a tendency to break over time. And I will be honest with you guys, this is not my very first long haul with the Studio Series. I actually own two. One being broken and one that's actually pretty good so far, which is what you're seeing here. Anyway, back to the transformation. Now that we've got all this uh, freed up, let's go ahead and untab the walls to the bucket piece and bring this panel up here just so it's out of the way. We get some clearance here. Now we can untab the wall piece from the front portion of whatever this piece is i really don't know Natch give us the clearance that we need to untab the hands and what we're going to do now is we are going to slide out on their own separate piece these pieces here come in here and we're going to slide down right here on this hinge this back piece that's going to fold in like so repeat the same process on this side slide this down and fold this in just like that next thing we're going to do is we're going to untab the back wheels and then we're going to flip them around just so they're out of the way of the transformation with the arms here now we're going to lift this panel up just a little bit more so we need more clearance here and what we're going to do now is we are going to bring out the arms swing these pieces back just a little bit so we can get more clearance to bring out the shoulders all the way then we will take this panel here and we will swing it down and then we will close it back repeat the same process on this side swing this out just a little bit more so we can bring the shoulders up as you heard it snap into place rotate this panel this way and when it's lined up with the forearms go ahead and push in there we go there's that. Now what we can do is we can move these wheels out of the way so we can get a little room for my thumb to rotate the head like so. There we go. This back panel piece that we've been moving around every so often, we're gonna lift that up just like that. And then there's a tab right here, which you can kind of see that's gonna go into a slot here in this back piece this is lined up correctly it should go in no problem that shall create construct the con long hauls obvious shoulder guard pieces we're gonna untab the legs and we're gonna rotate them like this these wheels are going to swing this way and tab in to the side just like that flip out the feet just like this and we can come to the backpack section yes the figure does have a backpack right and we can on a double hinge swing this up just like this and it's supposed to if i raise the camera so you can see this it's supposed to 
tab in to this slot right here. It's not the best, um, the best connection, and sometimes it doesn't go in at all. But there are times where I can actually get this to snap in, no problem. It, it's just a gamble. Here is Constructicon long haul in his robot mode. And this is pretty accurate to the actual movie counterpart. Again, this is a $30 action figure compared to like masterpiece movie figures, which I don't think we'll ever see a Constructicon long haul in a masterpiece format. With that said, this is as close as it's gonna get to masterpiece quality. It's not a perfect figure as it does have quite a bit of kibble in the back. Now taking a look at the detail on the figure, you can see that they put a lot of attention to that said detail. It is very movie accurate. Looks great. Some nice work here, especially with the way that the wheels swing around and tab into place here on the side of its legs. Looks really good. Even the backpack isn't that much of an eyesore. Yeah, it's pretty flat here. There's no panel work whatsoever. But again, a $30 price point. I think this is as best as they could really do. Um, yeah, sure, there's going to be like KOs in the future. I'm sure that one of those uh, Black Mambas or uh, Wayne Chain is going to do a very nice job at retooling this figure, making him upscaled and giving him a lot more panel work to hide some of this mess here, which you just can't get under 30 bucks. Still, we got a lot of paint here with the nice silver highlights here. It's some of this engine detail. We got some gunmetal gray up in here. We got some red striping around the sides of his chest. It's got some nice red eyes. It is a little sloppy on the left side, but that's just my figure. Your results could be different. Hopefully all this is actually coming out the way you can see it. I love this head sculpt. You really need to see this in person. Wiring work here on the forearms, which is actually painted in silver. Once again, some nice hydraulics around the figure. All that gunmetal gray that you saw on the bottom of his vehicle form is actually now in placement on his thighs, which is movie accurate. The wheels up in here at the top of his shoulders are actually in the right place, unlike the original Voyager class figure that came out during Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah, it wasn't perfect for the time. It was okay. This is so much better. It looks good. Not much more that I can really say about this figure in this mode, except we'll go through the articulation now. So he does have a ball joint at his head. Some nice hinges here at the shoulders for inward and outward movement, which also includes a swivel, minus the fact that the wheels will get in the way of some of this. And yeah, he's not a well-articulated action figure, but since this is an awkward movie design where it's very bulky anyway, you can understand how much they could actually put in the articulation department on this figure. Not that much at all. Anyway, he does have a swivel cut above the elbow that makes up for the fact he doesn't have a bicep swivel. He also has single jointed elbows that does get 90 degrees of bend, which is very tight on this figure, so I'm not worried about these getting loose anytime soon. Nothing at the wrist. He does have waist articulation, as you can hear the clicking here, but that's also due to transformation into his leg mode for Devastator. More details on that in the future. We also have some nice clicking here at the legs going up about this much as long as you move this thigh piece out of the way and it does also go back a little bit not to a normal a stance as that's pretty good there not a full jcvd split but it's pretty good we do have a swivel cut at the thigh section we also have rotation here at the upper portion of the knee the knee does get 90 degrees of bend as you can see as long as you move the backpack out of the way we also have some hinges for up and down movement at the toes and there's also the included ankle rocker pivot which i love on my transformer now figure on the size comparison and here we have voyager class constructicon long haul with the upper constructicons available at the moment here is voyager rampage Deluxe Dinosaur, I'm just kidding, it's High Tower, and of course, the little one, Scrap Metal. And as you can see, in comparison, Rampage is actually the tallest at the moment. Second would be Long Haul, third would be Scrap Metal, and of course, the fourth one would be 
high tower. The last thing included with Long Haul is of course the Studio Series backdrop that each figure comes with and as you can see it is the desert. As you can see we've got some mountains, we've got two pyramids right there. Not much to really show off here except for the figure and as you can see it does look pretty good on it. It's not too big, it's not too small. Wish there was a little more space here at the front where the figure could be posed, but in a vanilla pose, it's all right. You know, these really aren't for me, these backdrops. I don't keep them anyway, but it is nice to have something that you can actually display your figures on if you have the room to actually do so. Okay, that's going to conclude this video. The only other thing that I can do is give you my overall thoughts about the figure. He is actually one of those that you can truly purchase. He's a cool figure, may not have much in the form of articulation due to all the kibble that's around his body, but outside of that, he does look very menacing. He is very cool, one of the best constructed cons to come out of the series. And you know, personally speaking, just the overall design of him is probably the best out of the constructed cons, and that's even talking about Devastator. You will not be disappointed with this purchase, but be forewarned, if you are not careful with transforming this figure for the first time, you might actually snap the hinges around the bucket. It was a little mistake that I should have looked at, but I overlooked it when going through the transformations by the instruction. So if you want to save yourself the headache and the fear of snapping your figure on the first go, why not look up some video reviews from the professionals out there to actually show you step-by-step -step transformation on this guy, and you won't make that mistake that I did. Just a little caution that I'm throwing into the wind for you guys. He is a true win and a nice addition to your Studio Series collection. And besides, if you are interested in Devastator, you've got to have this figure one way or another. So it's a win-win. It's a win for Hasbro and Takar Tomy, and it's a win for the fans out there just like moi. So that's going to do it. If you have any questions or comments about this, why not hit me up in the comment section down below here on Facebook. And until next time, my friends, this is your unprofessional toy reviewer, Redis Power, signing off saying thank you very much for watching this, and I will see you whenever you see me.